Okay, we're going to start and people will continue to join. Welcome to the first of a comprehensive series of webinars. This time we'll focus on updating you on the overall process and propose ways for the community to get involved in shaping, delivering and communicating about this large program of transformational change. We do recognize that this evolving program represents unprecedented change for Cochrane as an organization and for the community as well, and that it will impact each of us in different ways. Before we start the webinar, I just wanted to give you some housekeeping. Your mi microphone will be muted because we're expecting uh, over 100 people to join us today uh, and to prevent background noise. If you'd like to ask your questions, please use the chat. They will be open all the time and we'll then select questions to discuss. Um, if you would like to turn uh, subtitles, you just click on live transcript and it will be turned on for you. But at this point, we all have questions concerns and understand that this process brings challenges and opportunities. We want to shape these webinars according to your needs. So starting on 26th of May, we will have fortnight webinars in two time zones to discuss talks of relevance to you. You can participate by using the form developed in the Cochrane Community website the link for the form is on the site, or you can send your questions and comments to feature at Cochrane.org. Your questions will help us organize topics for AppCAMS webinars and to create a timetable that we will update regularly. Today, the purpose of this webinar is to update you on what we have been doing since the board approved the program of work on 9th of February. We will have Tracy Howe sharing an overview of what the board has agreed and why. Ruth Foxley sharing our approach to implementation. I will talk to you about four of the projects an update on giving you an update in four of the projects, and Todd will host a QA session. We know and understand that you have many questions for us, and it is unlikely that we'll be able to provide answers to all of them today. However, we do encourage you to add your questions to the chat because they will be addressed through our online FAQs of future webinar as well as today. But first things first, over to you, Tracy, for a reflection on the board decision. Uh, thank you, Carla, and uh, welcome to everyone on the call. Um, we can see that there's almost 100 people here. So good morning, good evening, and uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Tracy Howe. I'm one of the co-chairs uh, of the governing board, and I'm just going to uh, talk you through some of the board decisions that we've made over the last uh, 12 months that uh, bring us to the point uh, at which we're at now. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, you've seen some of this information before, um, but this was where we were at when we started making the decisions around this project. We know that um, the, that Cochrane has committed to open access uh, by 2025, and this will significantly affect our income. So we need to have a new business model that's affordable and will sustain Cochrane beyond 2025, well into the future. Part of that requires us to diversify our income uh, through investing in fundraising, and you'll have heard uh, Previously, that, uh, that's one of our priority areas is to uh, appoint a director of development uh, to focus our efforts in that area. We know as well, and we've had lots of uh, criticism from um, many uh, external stakeholders around the sort of complexity and inefficiencies within Cochrane. 
in terms of um, the, the length of time it takes us to produce reviews that are, are well needed. Uh, and this has been particularly uh, demonstrated during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Um, but actually what came out of that was the fact that um, we learned a lot about streamlining review production and some of that learning will take us forward uh, as we move through this project. And finally, we really need to be clear on our priorities uh, and focus on the right things. So it's about making sure that all of our efforts, our collective efforts, work together to give us the best uh, impact of our activity. Next slide, please. So in June 2021, the uh, governing board uh, approved the strategy for change that hopefully you'll be familiar with. Um, this is just demonstrating the three goals of the strategy for change. Clearly, goal one, most importantly, producing trusted evidence. Goal two, advocating for evidence. And goal three, informing health and care decisions. So all of our um, uh, strategic thinking fits around the strategy for change. And then 20, uh, 20th of July last year, we approved a, a model, which is what we've been talking about today, uh, as outlined as the basis for further consultation um, on new model of review production. So the board recognised that we needed to separate the uh, functions um, of review production uh, and the editorial processes. So this was the, um, the decision made on the 20th of July. Next slide, please, Carla. And then uh, in October, we also approved a recommendation to carry out uh, research and consult widely with key stakeholders on a full range of open access models. And the board are requesting validation and due diligence on all of those different options open to us so that we can make a more informed decision about what will happen with the open access agenda uh, and the, the business models that will go around that. Next. Thank you. Um, so the board decision making is quite complex and we cover a whole range of things when we're making uh, our decisions. So we look at the strategic implications. Uh, so do, do the proposals meet our vision uh, and mission? The economic implications are looking at, uh, will the, the proposal uh, generate income? Will this income be sustainable? And we look at financial modelling. So we look at uh, short, medium and long term modelling to ensure that any decisions that we make are, are worked out over that process to make sure that everything that we do is affordable. We also look at the finance and resource implications in terms of cost to the charity. Um, so some of those costs may be about drawing down on our reserves and of course to the Cochrane community um, because there is a cost uh, broader than this, the central executive team. Uh, so we, look, we do consider the resource implications for the broader community. We also look at the operational implications. So for example, do we have sufficient capacity and capability? Um, because there's no point in making decisions if, we, if we're not able to operationalize them. And we also um, are, are have a legal requirement as a board to look at the, the organizational risk of any decision that we make. So we need to look at the, the strategy uh, and the governance of any decision making. Um, and the governance aspect covers things like uh, if we enter into any legal agreements or memorandums of understanding, etc., uh, so that we have a governance framework around all the decisions that we make. And including uh, it in that um, is also the accountability of decision making. So 
how does the accountability flow through the organization? Uh, I've mentioned financial sustainability there. We also look at people and culture. So uh, one of these things is around uh, making sure that we're completely inclusive and diverse as an organization. So what impact will the project have on that and how can we ensure that we, we make sure that we're as inclusive as possible? We also need to look at reputational risk. So in any of our decision making, um, is the end, end result uh, going to impact on our reputation in a negative way? And finally, the, the key risk is, will any decision making impact on our ability to produce evidence synthesis as that's sort of our core activity? So that's risk. And most importantly, we need to look at every decision we make, does it have a value to our stakeholders and beneficiaries? Because we are a charitable organisation, and as part of that, we are required to ensure that all our activity has a direct benefit to our stakeholders and beneficiaries. And when we talk about our stakeholders and beneficiaries here, uh, that's really about anybody who's making decisions about health and care. So that includes uh, government agencies, uh, policy makers, uh, um, health and care providers, uh, clinicians, and patients and carers. So they're our uh, stakeholder and beneficiary group. Thank you, Carla. So uh, on the 9th of February, following an extensive consultation process carried about out by uh, Carla's team and the central executive team, uh, many of which you, you will have attended, the extensive series of seminars, the, um, the questionnaires, the website, um, people sent in information. Uh, all of that information was used to shape the next iteration of the paper that the board received. So the board uh, received um, a paper that had an options appraisal in it, so we looked at different options uh, open to us, one of which included no change to anything, uh, so business as usual. Um, and what the end result of that was that the board recommended the approved, um, uh, the board approved the recommended change to Cochrane's evidence synthesis production model and the immediate move to implementation activities, which is where we're at today. We also approved the use of strategic reserves to, uh, to the central editorial service to give more capacity to allow all evidence synthesis published by Cochrane and also to provide a direct pathway for publication in the Cochrane Library and you'll hear more about that later. And we also agreed that we needed to establish an advisory group to ensure the management of this transition and that it has board oversight. So that's where we are at now. Uh, Carla, next one. So the other thing that we uh, charged the central executive team with doing uh, was to ensure that the implementation met the principles of the strategy for change, which is collaboration, relevance, integrity and quality. And I'm sure everybody would agree with those and that we increase diversity and inclusion in the organization as well. And finally, uh, the requirements of implementation are an open and tra transparent process with clear decision-making. So these were what we charged with the central executive team with doing. So in summary, uh, this has been a strategic decision by the board based on our vision and mission looking at the risks and sustainability to the organisation and the value of our stakeholders and beneficiaries. So it's a board decision and the central executive team have been charged with uh, delivering on that uh, through the implementation plan that you'll hear about. And that's, uh, that's me finished. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to now hand over to Ruth Foxley, who's going to talk to you about the implementation planning. Thank you.